if it's happening in domain, the, the, the village would have a better defense to it than our CDD. But it's critical that you folks continue to ultimately have, if there is an economic benefit, that would come back to the CDD. So I thank you for raising those issues. And I think it's potentially slated, maybe my colleague on the board, Bill Reynolds, knows more, but I think it's scheduled to potentially come into Lee County by 2024. <coughs> 25. Thank you, Bill. 2025. That's not a long time. Well, I, I, I figure I got 20 more years here. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank you first. Well, no, as long as, long as it keeps developing east of us, it's only logical that some kind of road would be proposed. To, to join Bonita Beach Road and Corkscrew Road. Now, whether it's that route or, or a route even further east of here, I mean, we all have common sense and we can all look at a map and we all know development because we've lived through it. I mean, I've been here since 96. You know, you can just look at it and say, yeah, it would make sense that something could potentially be put through there. I didn't say it's logical, but, it's, but if you can look at a map, you're like, yeah, I can see, I can see where they're going to try to connect that. I see. We just have one discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Excuse me. One other. One other. Okay, guys. Can we just have one discussion, please? I'm sorry. Just one other point. I mean, you raised a very good point about flood insurance, but we in Lee County are about 13 feet above sea level, which is a pretty high grade above sea level. We are not in a flood plain area. Today. Doesn't mean eventually we wouldn't. <laughs> right. Uh, so I, I agree, but currently we are not in a flood plain area. Flood plain area is about 13 feet above sea level, which for Florida is very, very high. Yeah. So we're, we're appreciating that in that respect. So I just want to make sure it's always the thing. You're welcome. I know, so, okay, I'm sorry. I know, so I spoke to someone back here. Preserve <coughs> the other property, preserve, mm -hmm. they gave that property over. So they did. They did? Yeah. Because I had asked the village to contact me if that was done. Yeah. Interesting. Would it make any difference if rather than selling the property, they, we could lease it to them on like a yearly renewal basis. Is that possible then? It's possible. Can, doesn't sound so permanent that way to me, you know. And I think the village seemed very open to negotiating with us uh, a, an agreement that would be very favorable for Stony Brook State Forces. At least they seem that way when we talked to them at, at the last meeting. So. One government entity is stronger than the other ones, and both of them together have to be considerably stronger. So that would make a better argument to keep 951 from coming through there. And if they build 951, I guarantee you, it's not going to be quite as high as 75, but it's going to be higher than what we're spending right now. And that creates problems for flooding. So um, the board will continue to look at this. Uh, I will contact the village. I had asked them. Um, when the preserve, whatever was going on with the preserve, they would contact me. Um, I have not heard anything from them yet. Um, <clears throat> I will contact Steve and see you know, what, the, uh, <clears throat> what their uh, agreement and um, information was. So I will get back to you. Anything else for this? Yes. Uh, if, that was, if that sale was to be consummated, does that require a community vote? No. What was the question? Does yeah. that require a community vote? <clears throat> no, because the CDD board owns it, and it would, oh, be, okay. it would be the board that would say yeah or nay. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Okay, Jeff. Um, I know John's not here. Um, we have um, looked at our cutting green. And um, it is, as Jeff says, a little too small for what we have, what we need. And it has had a lot of wear and tear. So, Jeff, I'll leave this to you. 
Well, for a couple of years now, uh, we've, we've had some issues with the, with the putting green going off color, uh, litter spots, we removed trees from the area and hope that more sunlight would help it. And uh, it's, 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 it's not reflective of the quality of the golf experience we're trying to put out. Um, my understanding and uh, my recollection from playing here in the early 2000s was the putting green was about uh, probably 40% bigger than what it is now. Uh, and that when the greens were redone in 2010, the uh, decision was made to make it smaller. I don't really understand why, why that decision was made. It doesn't make a lot of sense because you normally would have if you say you're going to do 45, 44, 45, 46,000 rounds of golf a year, you would probably want a bigger green than four cups. Because realizing that part of the front of that green is unusable, unusable because of the slope. So uh, I brought it up to John and Eileen and Ed and a couple other people about you know, we need to start looking at the future and planning to rebuild and change the putting green and expand it. And we've added pavers and there's, not, there's some space, you know, there's some space to the front of the left if you're walking in from the street. If you can do that. And, you know, there's some irrigation that probably have to be moved around. I talked to John about it uh, five years ago. He told me it's probably anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars to do that. But to me, it makes sense because once again, it's a front of the house issue. You want to have the best product possible up front that makes sense, and you don't want to, you know, you don't want the first impression of the customer to be, "Well, look at this green. This is what the rest of the green is going to look like." Of course, they don't. They don't reflect that, but we want to reflect our best. Now, that being said, you know, a couple of years ago we talked about the possibility of building a practice center. And we still have this on the back burner of how we could do it. And uh, a lot of you might know or on the board, Peter Adino. Ty Adino, Ty played it, it was drafted the pub last year. Peter does fundraising for Southwest Florida Junior Golf. And while he's doing that, I've often brought up to him the idea that we would still like to build this learning center and I'd like to be able to do that where private funds, uh, charitable donations are donated and we're able to build it through the club. Uh, it's kind of a pipe dream, I guess, in a way, but he's had some bites and some possibilities. My idea would be to come up with two, two different proposals. <coughs> One, that we do it in-house, enlarging the putting green. A small scale kind of you know something that's going to make it better or and then two have a proposal where we reduce both the putting green and the chipping green and change some stuff there <coughs> add some shape around where we some chipping areas make it a little bigger there as well make them both big and have that in the package of donations given to us to build this learning center and shipping area, the buddy area, and, and a learning center at the same time. So anyway we go, we need to at some point redo the buddy area. Just my opinion. And I think I don't think it's not unshared by John. Uh, that you know that needs to be choice and, and the best it can be. So we need to look into that going forward. <coughs> Jeff, I had spoken with John with regard to possibly, while we're trying to bring the putting green back, use some of the chipping green as a putting green. Um, they're looking into that as well. We've done that in the past, so. Yeah. We got a couple, four or five years ago, it got really critical, and they closed it for, I think, close to three weeks just for the chipping green. So, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not just a, a 2020 issue. It's happened in the past, okay. and uh, I, you know, I still harken back to like, why would you take a putting green that was built by the designer? And one of the best things that he did was that, and built a green that was an amp to the number of rounds you were putting through, 
and then reduce it. I don't understand the reduction. You know, I, I don't know who was around them. They could tell me why they did that, but I would be interested to know. I was around yeah. then. Yeah, we were, we were around. Whoa. What were we thinking? Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine our golf course maintenance at the time recommended it. I don't think we would do it on our own. I think we also expanded that with the pavers and all that. Plus, we couldn't use that staging area up, the, up by the uh, right. parking lot without an exorbitant payment to our landlord. Yeah, he wanted $500 a month for it. Yeah, just I remember have, that. You know. that. That was the primary reason. Right. We couldn't park uh, our carts. So, and uh, TAQ wouldn't let us use that space for a while. Right. Right. So he didn't independently rent that to a hot dog vendor. So he, right. he decided to let us have it. Yeah. So it was a little bit different I, environment. Yeah, I get it. But it was an all aspect. We need something bigger than a four cup playing area. And I know John is currently going back to the old, um, all the records and, and the layout of everything to see where the irrigation is, what the irrigation would cost to increase it, and, and what the cost. So he's he's been working on that, and will continue to work on that. Well, you know, like let's go way out in the future here for, for a second. Once the bond is paid off, all right, in 2027, 2028. At that time, we will probably look to go get financing to redo the green period. Uh -huh. So if you think we can make eight years of limping through with the green, I mean, I, I do that to John. Right. And then at that time, do a complete transformation. That might be something better. But, you know, the, the, the shelf life of Champion Bermuda is about 15 to 20 years. And that this happens to line up with those dates. So I think that makes a lot of sense yeah. because we've we're paying off a lot of nuts right now. Yeah. Right. right. And I got you. you know. and I, I just want to bring it to you because I you know I know how this works. So the playing green's going bad. People start chirping and then they come to you about it. I want to make sure you we we know about. It. He knows about it. I know about it. And right. I'm not overly excited about it. But it is what it is. And we're trying to work around. It. Okay. Have we thought about? And I was thinking about this when I played Friday, because it was a little crowded. Are the Rangers or anybody directing the people that are going off the back nine of the crossovers that they could go putt on the chipping green? No, but we can. We can. I mean, that might alleviate some of the traffic right. on the main green, and plus, obviously, enhance your experience because you don't feel quite as crowded because maybe you know the, the groups that are going off the back will be go will putting over on the, the chipping green. Chris, would you would you really want to be on that green putting while somebody's chipping on the? I'll wear a helmet. Honestly, I you know I, I I'm pretty bare bones. I you know I can share my hole with somebody else. I I, I don't know, but I feel a little bit more about the people out the bunker. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, coming out of the bunker. I didn't necessarily think it was the safest alternative, but it's a thought. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it's time to see. Well, they're on a Saturday morning watch. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, is that allowed? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to take, uh, I don't think it's going to take, uh, not going to take up to eight years because we'll be done with this last loan we just took out is five years. So the most it's going to take is five years to move along and right. do what we have to do. I mean, I guess if you want to get some numbers together, we can look at it. But right. It just seems like we've, we've got a lot on our plate right now to pay right. off. Agreed. Yeah, so it's, uh, but it's like, you know, to prepare for the future. Let's look at it. If we can use the chicken green to cut. Uh, hey, maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and Peter will find us a bunch of money. Yeah, let's hope. Yeah. Just a, a point of clarification that Jeff made that bond, that whether it's going to be paid off in seven, six, seven, eight years. Is that the bond that the private investor owns so we would get rid of the private guy and then it would then just be on the CDD? Correct. Thank you. Yeah. The residents have three more years. Our, our, gotcha. our piece. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they have eight. Well, actually, they have seven because they have one. One payment in reserve, so that's true. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.
Can't clear that out. Uh, okay. What's that? That old 2008 bond. And we don't owe any more money, but there's still money hanging, hanging out there. For some it would be nice to just clear it up and get it out of the book. You know? okay. okay. The uh, assessments are rolling in for all the general funds. Uh, 89% of our assessments have arrived through December. <coughs> mm. yeah. <clears throat> the last bond we had in 2014. Uh, November payment was made at 41.3. We have a $306,000 payment in May, and there's sufficient funds there. <coughs> Patient fund is also in good shape. Uh, <clears throat> note that from the, from the golf course is 155,573 at the end of uh, December 31st. Yeah, we've already paid 100 of that, so there should be 55,000 left there. The general fund also owes the uh, irrigation fund some money because they be borrowed from that also. And our cash balance as of last Friday was 268532 right. So the cash is coming up. Right. And the receivables, are, the payables are down from 170 down to 60 something. Payables as of this morning are nearly 13,000. Okay. Great. Right. Super. The financials for the golf course are a little messed up because there's some accounting that got put in the wrong places and whatnot. But on the summary, uh, revenue for uh, December versus uh, last December, the revenue was just almost right on it, three hundred three hundred and thirteen dollars difference. Uh, after putting in. Uh, Plus the sales, so it's twenty-six hundred dollars difference. Yeah. And <coughs> to the <coughs> revenue through uh, through December was forty thousand dollars under last year, year to date. But seeing that we're forty thousand dollars up already and in January, it looks like we're we right back on budget again. So. And the. Uh, Part that showed up in the uh, admin expenses was uh, probably belongs in Jeff's uh, golf course for credit card discount fee. Mm -hmm. the, the bank charges are low, and this looks like that needs to be added to that. Uh, Jeff also had a question, which I don't have an answer to, is uh, the card lease payments look like they're out of whack. So, did Jeff ever get back to you on that? No, sir, I added this one. Okay. And then on John Buchnick's uh, expense account, <clears throat> the, the total $268,000 for the bunkers was, uh, was booked to his account that's going to be reversed out. And uh, it'll be capitalized over 15 years. The interest will hit his expense and the, uh, the principal will be taken out of the cash reserves. Can, um can Jeff do us a schedule like we have for the other loans? I think that that would be... Yeah, I'll ask him. Okay, yeah. just so that we can see. Bond payment is what that schedule is. And we're going to uh, go ahead and transfer the 121 and change due from the irrigation uh, to the general fund. Okay. Sorry, from, from, from general, general fund? fund to the irrigation. Yeah, okay. That's where the cash flush in the general fund that right. Okay. okay. So with that, um, with the 268 adjustment, and you did have a year-to-date, we're in pretty good shape. Yeah. 
year to date should be pretty close. Yeah. Can I have a motion to accept the agenda item number 15? I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay, we need a few minutes from December 17th. Um, there was one other resident that I wanted to add on here, Rose McBride. Um, she also, um, as I recall, had a statements during the uh, meeting, so we could just ask her, add her to the uh, to, um, the present. Got it. Um, okay. Now, anything on page first page? Second. Um, my only question was that Jeff answered that he's going to capitalize the bonkers, and he's he's going to do that for 15 years. 15. Else. Page two, page three, um, line 104, this stuff stated that the CDD would be the HOA, not the CDD, the HOA pays that to maintain. Um, Got it. I would say the conservation areas, because the 43 is not strictly for uh, <coughs> the back preserve. Yep. Got it. Okay. Um, and then I just had a question on 113, 114, 115, um, where I asked if we would be responsible for acquiring other land or water credits. Would we have to do that if that was given to the village? I can't, can't see how they would come back and say you needed to do that. Okay. Actually, I think 110, I asked that question. Okay. Else on page 125 it says Mr. Cox asked. I thought I was involved in that discussion. I thought I it think yeah. that was N128. I, yeah, that's probably it. I think I, I think it was you, Chris. Yeah. Uh, yes. I can't understand why they're in the U.S. homes name still on the property appraiser's records. Okay. Um, I've got the deeds where they were all transferred. Okay. So I thought, I remember this. Mm -hmm. We did. It came this. up before. Right. And I thought, and I'm sure I sent them a letter that gave them that list and said, here's the deeds where they were transferred over. Well, that didn't work for them, I guess. So, uh, I don't know, do you want me to reach out to U.S. Home and have them give us a quick claim deed and really just a see if that clears it up or did you really care I mean it's a couple of them were parcels like uh, the one that you had it had an F in the um, mm -hmm. that's where they had a future development plot and they put a condo on it and the declaration of condominium didn't match the entire parameters of that parcel so a little ring around the condos is owned by US home okay. that's on two of them <laughs> And then one of them was the uh, south end of uh, 
Windham. The road over there by the you know, Windham Run. Yeah, Windham. You know, just odd little parcels like that. Well, I think it, should, it would be clean if they were just all in our name. I'll do my best. Okay. Are they, uh, we'll try that. Okay, because I, I, do I think they'll come back and claim the property? No. I don't think so, but I think it would be cleaner. Um, the legislature is in session. One of the big things they're going to be looking at is uh, water quality and changes to the regulatory structure for uh, people that can potentially contribute to surface water discharge contamination. Golf courses are in the crosshairs. So we can expect uh, maybe some changes that would be effective next year or in June so that we would hopefully have enough heads up that we can anticipate what your changes in cost are going to be for some of your maintenance practices and include that in your budget. Let's be, be warned. <laughs> Imagine that's a hot topic where John is this yes. weekend. So yeah. I would anticipate him having some information. Mm -hmm. um, back on the parcels, are they are they paying a CDD tax on them? Oh, no, no. <laughs> okay, it, it's like uh, not accessible. Yeah. It, okay, so they're not. It's not accessible land. They haven't been losing any revenue. No. They're just little. Well, no, I wasn't worried about losing it. I was worried about if we took it back in, we would actually we would be we would be. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And in some of them, it would even, uh, on the interactive map, it identifies both the CTD and the U.S. home as the owner of the parcel. <laughs> so, you know, the figure. Okay, so um, do we want to roll out something? Staff members have been just all in the so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think we should. So, okay. Dan, if you can take care of that, I would appreciate that. Thank you. And yeah, it was fun going to that and clicking on all those parcels. <laughs> I got a little blue eye going. Oh, sure. <clears throat> so, thank you. Johnson Engineering. Chuck? Uh, I have nothing additional for you at this time. Okay. Uh, just a strong reminder next month is odd month. We're going to 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Make sure your calendars are marked. No. Yes. 6 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Um, I think I put that in the newsletter to remind the residents. It's always somebody that forgets or doesn't mark the calendar, right? Yeah. Getting a call at nine, where is everybody? Where is everybody? Mm -hmm. So, um, board members, right there again? I did a quick, I, I asked you about the roads a while back. You were going to maybe look at some of these. Sweet people, but, uh, to give kind of a life expectancy before we need yeah. to mill and repeat. I'll, uh, I'll take that up with Johnson. Well, the other question I have is the agreement between the CED and the HOA kind of says that the HOA takes care of the roads. Yeah, I think more than anything, it, it kind of, uh, you know, it initiates a conversation between the two entities and who's better suited to, to address it. Um, we did the main boulevard coming in a few years ago. I think we were in a better position that we had some excess funds that we could do it and there was no financial impact to the community. So we'll take a look at it. We'll try to put a dollar figure to it and yeah. then we can at least initiate the discussion, timing, cost, who's going to do it when that time is right. My take's always been that, you know, the smaller maintenance, HOA, larger project, it would fall. And then just put the top coat on it, take away. Do the road all over again? So you do. Yeah, so just a, a mill and relay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Restrike. Yeah. So we'll get some costs together. We'll okay. set an inspection, probably have something for you in a couple of months. Okay. okay. Sean? No. Okay. Okay. Good. Chris? I guess the only thing we we haven't heard anything from the village on the country. Okay. Uh, gone silent. They said they leave it in our lap at this point. So when and if we're ever ready, they're still interested. So I will. Like I said, I did ask them to keep me posted on any other changes. And if the preserve really has turned the property over, I will give them a call and see, you know, what what they've done and what they're on. Um, and I really stand with that because I thought they were supposed to get in touch with me. Yeah, and I mean, I just, my only thought is, you know, if we're going to 
if we're going to go down this road and we're going to investigate it, then let's investigate it and get, you know, or are we just going to sit and say, well, yeah, we might do this next month, then next month we get together and, well, let's just push it off. So right. either then, move forward or, 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 or not. And I'm not saying, but move forward, meaning right. let's get something in writing. Let's, let's start hammering something out. Right. And then the other thing that, um, and I know we can't pin it down, roughly what would your costs be? Because the village wasn't too keen on picking up our attorney's fees. On oh, the transfer like that? Uh, not this transfer, well, but yeah, for the uh, preserve and going through all that. Right. It's, you know, enough to retire on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. We'll see what we can do. He does live in Caravelle, so yeah. that's, that's helpful. <laughs> Nothing else we can have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye, aye. aye. Opposed? See you all in February. Sure.